fires and direct it where it's needed. But when electricity comes from burning fossil fuels like coal, carbon dioxide is the inevitable byproduct. The reason is that like all fossil fuels, coal consists of hydrocarbons, long chains of hydrogen and carbon atoms. When burned, the carbon separates from the hydrogen and combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. The more carbon, the more carbon dioxide is released. And coal has the most carbon of any fossil fuel. So here, the governor is acting at his boldest. 16% of California's electricity now comes from coal. He plans to scrap all of it and replace most of it with renewable energy. That's sources like wind and solar power, sources that never run out and don't directly produce a single molecule of CO2. Right now, California gets 12% of its power from renewables. The governor's plan is to raise that to 20% in just two years. Let me tell you something. We can make our goal and reach our goal of renewables by the year 2010 easily. By 2020, he hopes to get to 33%. To make this possible, there are ambitious plans to put solar panels on a million roofs and on 1,500 acres of commercial buildings. But unlike efficiency improvements, solar panels are out of reach for most homeowners. Air dusty up there. Even after a tax rebate, Bill Nye's cost $32,000. The most visible renewable energy source is also the most expensive. And one million solar roofs will yield just 1% of the necessary emissions cuts. Here's how solar can produce power plant levels of energy. Called solar thermal, huge tracts of mirrors focus the sun's rays on tubes of moving oil to make steam. But for solar to be a real player, dozens of plants like this will have to be built in California. So far, the state has only one in operation. Still, the governor has high hopes for renewables. And there is no doubt that when it comes to wind and sun, California is blessed. The Tehachapi Pass on the edge of the Mojave Desert is a monument to renewables. There are over 3,000 wind turbines here and plans for solar thermal plants are underway. Places like this are just exceptional resources. There's solar power, there's wind power, there's the ability in the space to invest in big projects. What's really remarkable is that these types of places we thought of as high deserts, but in fact, they're a remarkable place and an opportunity to start a clean energy revolution. Wind turbines work by rotating a shaft just behind large blades. The main shaft turns a gearbox, which ratchets up the speed for a generator to produce electricity. The basic rule is, the longer the blade, the more power produced. So, much hope is being invested in a new supersized generation of turbines the technologies have evolved dramatically. The wind turbines being installed now are much larger, much lower cost, higher reliability. What's going on now is a huge rebirth in the industry. In some of the areas, like here, this has become a least cost way to produce power. In the Tehachapi, Oak Creek Energy has installed the first of 1,500 new turbines that could replace the capacity of nine coal power plants, if certain problems can be solved. The Tehachapi Pass is 80 miles from LA. Long transmission lines are needed to link it to the city. And a lot of people are opposed to them. Many of environmentalists that say, we would love you to build plants in the Mojave Desert, but the only thing is when it comes to building the transmission lines to get it on a grid. No. 
It's this crazy stuff that you have environmental regulations holding up environmental progress. And that's what we are suffering under right now. It took six years to get permission to link these new turbines to LA. And the lines aren't even up yet. At this rate of progress, it would be very difficult for the governor to hit his target for renewables, 33% by 2020. But that is not the only problem. Coal can be burnt to release energy when you need it. But what do you do if the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow? Renewables aren't the easy, we're just going to do it solution. There are issues. One of the big issues is that for solar and wind in particular, they are intermittent. They're on some of the time, off other times, and it's not consistent. You cannot always predict it. But grid managers have to predict it. Uh, no. They need power on demand, and when they can't get it, it raises one alarming specter. Minutes after the power went out in Aliso Viejo, there was the sound of screeching tires and crumpled cars. With an aging grid and a shortage of reserve power, Blackouts have plagued California for years. We're talking 10, 20, 30 miles from downtown Los Angeles, possibly, with people without power. We cannot get on a computer. We cannot process prescriptions. We cannot call doctors for refills. To eliminate the risk of blackouts as renewable energy increases beyond 20%, it will be necessary to come up with a cost-effective technology to store power. With renewables, we don't know how to store the energy. If we want to get 20, 30 percent of our electricity generation from variable sources like wind or solar energy, we need to solve the energy storage problem. There is a backup plan. Build new natural gas plants. 45 percent of the state's electricity comes from natural gas, but natural gas still emits CO2, about half as much as coal. If the state were to build more of these plants, it would be stuck with these emissions for decades, as well as compromise the further development of renewables. So the governor has another possibility in mind. I want people to look at nuclear power. There's ways of going where we can revisit it. I'm not saying build it, because I'm not running the state by myself. What I'm saying is, let us all discuss it. To its advocates, nuclear power is the perfect alternative. Nuclear power produces the most amount of electricity for the smallest amount of global greenhouse gas emissions of any form of energy. And it's the only thing that's scalable and large enough that you can power modern society on. The nuclear fuel rods sit in water. A fission reaction heats it up. This produces steam and the steam turns turbines that generate electricity, all without emitting any carbon dioxide. California now has four reactors producing 15% of its power, but there's an obstacle to building any more. California and nuclear power have a very complicated relationship, starting with the fact that it's just plain illegal to build nuclear here. So even if you wanted to build nuclear, you're going to have to change the law. Fears of radioactivity go deep in California, so for the time being, there's a ban on building new reactors in the state, at least until the federal government approves a permanent storage site for nuclear waste. The biggest challenge with AB32 is that it's physically impossible unless you lift the state's obsolete 32-year ban on the construction of modern, safe and efficient nuclear power plants. You just can't do it without that. Chuck so DeVore is working in the California legislature to overturn this ban. And others feel nuclear, while expensive, could provide a crucial bridge of reliable power while the technological problems of renewables are figured out. I have to say, I'd rather see renewed investment in nuclear power plant generation of electricity in this century than to build more coal plants. There's no question in my mind that's the lesser of the two evils. But whatever the solution, whatever the mix of nuclear, natural gas, and renewables California winds up with, one thing is virtually certain. Electricity will cost more than it does now.
The concern about rising prices is a legitimate one, but to me, that's no 